Mark Croskill. Thanks to the UK Home Office, vulnerable refugees in Scotland will be spending Christmas warehoused in rundown hotels, including in Perth. This kind of institutional accommodation has no place in Scotland. It harms people seeking asylum, it infringes on their basic human rights, and has been described as like being in prison. So can I ask the First Minister to provide an update on any correspondence the Scottish Government has had with the UK Government Home Office on the use of hotels in this way? First Minister. I I'm happy to ask the uh, relevant Minister to make uh, available any recent correspondence uh, there. I don't think I'm exaggerating here uh, when I say there's acres of correspondence going back a long time between the Scottish Government and the Home Office about all matters relating to immigration and asylum and uh, in particular the issue of the use of hotel accommodation. Uh, it's fair to say that uh, the correspondence coming from the Home Office to the Scottish Government is uh, rarely satisfactory uh, on these matters. Uh, the UK Government, in my view, through its asylum policies, uh, treats asylum seekers uh, inhumanely, um, and I think the use of hotel accommodation in the way that Mark Ruskell has described is just one uh, aspect of that. Um, I do think that how we treat those uh, fleeing circumstances that we can scarcely imagine uh, seeking refuge here uh, does reflect on who we are as a society and as we go into a new year I can only hope that the UK Government and the Home Office uh, reflects on these matters and starts to treat asylum seekers with the dignity, uh, respect and humanity that they deserve. Well like, so this won't be a video that's around about an hour long so don't worry. <laughs> Just really a quick one uh, on this little exchange that took place here. Because rhetoric like this from these wankers really does piss me off. Uh, first and foremost, um, hope everybody had a decent wee Christmas. Uh, mine was relatively quiet. It's uh, not really something that family in close proximity here really celebrate that much anymore now that we're all a bit older. But, uh, you know, it's nice to get together with folks and whatnot. But, um, aye, it really is something when you compare that clip that I just played there to... Uh, an exchange at the beginning of this instalment of the Rainbow Unicorn question with prior knowledge in order to have answer time. See that? I'm getting good at this shit. <laughs> um, an exchange between an asshole Sarwar and Thin Lips, of course, which was regarding uh, homelessness. With Thin Lips going on to say this, I'll just play it quickly. I want to end on a point of consensus here, Presiding Officer. I do agree that for as long as one person is sleeping rough on our streets, there is more for all of us to do, which is why I will never close my mind eh, to suggestions and proposals that come, no matter where they come from. You see, I bring that up because, irrespective of whether or not the hotels in question are up to the standards of our newly appointed guests and their political puppet spokesmen, the fact of the matter is they're housed, technically, albeit temporarily. Whereas homelessness is a rife issue that still plagues Scotland. Plenty of people sleeping rough currently during the festive period. <laughs> and yet, there's politicians all across Scotland and the UK. There's activists, there's charities, there's organisations, etc. who are all complaining that the situation that so-called refugees find themselves in is inadequate. I mean, it begs the question, in a sense... If hotels ain't up to par, then where exactly is? Or what exactly is? Is it a case of just grandstanding from these individuals when they say the shit that they say? Or is it something else? It's a question I often ask myself because time after time after time I'm often reminded of the fact that the SNP in particular, hence what she referred to there by saying there's been endless amounts of correspondence and it all seems to be going one way. Westminster never seems to reciprocate. The SNP seem to be hell-bent on having devolved immigration powers and by extension their own immigration system and asylum, uh, asylum system, sorry. And they always use words such as a humane approach, etc. in comparison to what's been described just now which is inhumane. The hotels are being described as prison-like, you know? And as I said earlier, there's Scottish people, native Scots, homeless right now, <laughs> you know? But, begs the question, as I said, where exactly would be adequate for these people? What would be adequate for these people? Is it a case of grandstanding, as I said, or is it the fact that if they had their way, these people would be housed properly already, their asylum applications would have been granted already, 
And if we're going to go down the basis of what's humane and what's inhumane, the likelihood is there will be not one person that would be rejected. Every single person would be granted asylum. <laughs> you know, maybe that's a low-hanging fruit hot take for myself. Or maybe it's something to think about. Because I really do wonder to myself sometimes if there's method in the madness from the shit that these people espouse. Or if it's just, as I said, grandstanding. And there is a fuck ton of grandstanding that goes on in a shit, shit pot parliament from these absolute wankers. I mean, this is what happens when the disease of leftism is <laughs> allowed to flourish unchallenged. A parliament full of feminist wankers, progressives, social justice warriors, you name it, we've got it. Championing gay little phrases such as diversity, inclusion, etc, etc, you know all. Bootlicking, pandering. <laughs> It's just something to think about, you know. There was other little things as well that pissed me off in that little exchange. And again, it's the fact that the automatic assumption that's placed upon people who happen to come to the UK is that they are all fleeing war, they're all fleeing persecution, they've all had harrowing or ordeals, and we must accommodate them, showcase sympathy towards them, empathy towards them, and treat them accordingly. In doing this, I mean, it's self-explanatory, I would have thought, but in doing this, you effectively allow people that are chancing their arm to blend in. Anybody can come from anywhere across the Middle East or Africa, and the automatic assumption will be that they are fleeing war, or persecution, or terrorism, or whatever it may be, and they're in search of a better life, and we must treat them accordingly, with compassion, humanely, with empathy. You don't know where these people come from half of the time, considering the fact that a lot of them dump their identification in the middle of the English Channel before they're picked up by our Coast Guards. You know? And even the talk of an inhumane approach towards these people. They're in France. They're fuck all to flee from in France. They set sail, and we're led to believe that this is in correspondence with smugglers, bullshit, but they set sail across the English Channel and they are then picked up by our Coast Guards, our Border Force, taken to the UK and placed into hotels, free of charge, as far as they're concerned, meals taken care of, they're housed, they're clothed essentially, they're fed, they're watered, they're warm, they're comfy, and all they have to do is play the waiting game. <laughs> but the wait, it's inhumane. So what is the logical solution to this as far as the SP are concerned? And that is the question. That is the point of this video, essentially. It's just something to think about, really. When they say things such as a humane approach to immigration, a humane asylum system, a compassionate asylum system, etc., and they constantly push and argue and shout and scream and whine and moan and cry and greet for the ability to control their own asylum system, you have to wonder what that would entail if they were granted that. Now, I don't believe that they're really intent on their bogus independence referendum, quote-unquote independence, of course. I think that in time, they will just be granted an asylum system of their own and probably an immigration system of their own. I mean, that's one thing that they have been abundantly consistent on uh, in all the time that I've paid any attention to this shower of excrement, and that is asylum and migration devolved but obsessed with it. And now they use Brexit as an excuse. They say, oh, we need fruit pickers. Our aging population. Native Scots ain't having enough babies. So let's import Africans. <laughs> you know? Now this was an article from a couple of months ago, uh, November the 25th, not even a couple of months ago. Uh, asylum seekers to be put in hotels across Scotland. Now, real, okay, granted, the numbers at the time of this article being posted, relatively small. More than 50 asylum seekers are in one hotel in Falkirk, and the Home Office contractor Mears also has hotels in Aberdeen and Perth ready to be used. 
Asylum seekers were moved into hotels in Glasgow at the start of the pandemic as an emergency measure. Campaigners raised concerns about the mental health of desperate and vulnerable people living in hotels. See, again, automatic assumption is that they're desperate and they're vulnerable. I want to pe bring people's attention back to the uh, rape gang that was uncovered, unveiled in Glasgow. All you need to do is look up the nationalities of the majority of the people that were involved in said rape gang. And about 90% of the nationalities in question, the countries weren't war-torn. Those countries were fucking fine. But yet the automatic assumption is they're desperate, they're vulnerable, and we need to treat them accordingly. I'm not disputing that some of these people might genuinely be fleeing the Taliban or whatever it may be. But just like the Syrian refugee quote unquote crisis gave birth to a bunch of Africans and other Muslims from different countries nearby Syria to jump on the bandwagon, the Afghani migrant or refugee crisis is echoing the exact same pattern, mirroring the same pattern, I should say. We have Africans coming over here, but it's the Afghani refugee crisis. Same fucking pattern. And then when you have people like Sturgeon or that dickhead from the Green Party or people down south, whomever it may be, irrespective of which country, which continent even, you have people that will say things like, oh, they're desperate and vulnerable. You're giving these people excuses. It's for them to prove that that is the case in order for their asylum application to be valid or not. Not for you to just assume that they are. Because in doing so, you, automatically, you by default essentially give a green light to their asylum application to be granted if you just automatically assume that they're all desperate and vulnerable. That's, that's a matter of uh, judgment when it comes to whether or not they will be allowed asylum. No? But hey, I'm a bigot. Anyway, Charity said that a knife attack at a Glasgow hotel which left six people injured in June last year was a direct result of the dysfunctional UK asylum support and accommodation system. Ah oh, yes, an African who was housed in a hotel was upset that he, his macaroni or whatever the fuck it was went on a wee stabbing spree and, <laughs> you know, oh, that's, the, that's the UK's fault apparently. Oh yeah. Well, you know, there's something strange about that attack anyway because I, I do remember seeing photos uh, of uh, what looked like a Asian man handcuffed as well, but we never heard anything more about that, so fuck knows. Anyhow, um, Mears, the private contractor that houses asylum seekers for the UK Home Office, said it moved all its service users out of hotels in the city, with the exception of one which was used for quarantine and self-isolation of newly arrived asylum seekers. The Home Office, which provides free accommodation to asylum seekers while applicants' applications are being considered, said Glasgow was the only Scottish area to have taken part in a dispersal scheme since it began 20 years ago. However, it has not taken any new asylum seekers since the attack at the park in, in June of 2020. A spokeswoman for the Home Office said that other councils need to step up and play their part too. Uh, as a result of the lack of volunteers for the dispersal scheme, the Home Office is forced to find contingency hotel accommodation to house asylum seekers. Falkirk Council leader Cecil whatever told BBC Scotland they had been contacted a number of weeks ago to tell them the Home Office would be using a hotel in the area to house asylum seekers. Uh, she said they were concerned because they did not feel hotel accommodation was suitable but discussions about an alternative were not possible because the decision had already been taken. So what is the alternative? Temporary housing? Which they were in, a lot of them were in prior. Is that what the issue is here? But even that was an issue. <laughs> you know? Temporary housing is an issue. It's always an issue. The longevity of how long it takes for their uh, claim to be accepted or rejected that's an issue. It's all an issue because fundamentally the problem is that they haven't had their claim accepted yet and it's inhumane because they're desperate and fleeing war and persecution even if they're not. Hmm. About 50 asylum seekers mainly from Eritrea and East Africa are now in Falkirk. Oh, we have Africans here now. You know, everybody's talking up the Afghani refugee crisis. Yeah, now we have Eritreans here. <laughs> it's just a fucking free for all. That's what it is. A fucking free for all. And then you've got to bear in mind as well that the uh, UN have already recognised climate change is a factor now for uh, migration. And there was some ban pot um, on, I think it was Question Time a few weeks ago, an SP dickhead. And uh, was it this? Was it that? It was either that or Politics Live, irrespective. And the person in question, and I really I can't remember, I think it was an SP guy actually included, he was like, oh, fleeing war, persecution, and drought. 
Like, wait, 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 wait a fucking minute, you like. <laughs> so they're, they're starting to drip back into the narrative now. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. And it's COP26. A lot of the activists, I don't know if you watched any of that shit. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it, but there was one of the videos uh, that was put on the YouTube. It was talking about climate migration, and they were saying maybe 50 to 60 million climate refugees in the next 20 to 30 years or something. And you all know where their head is. The UK, Sweden, Germany, all the countries in the U in the uh, European continent and further afield, the UK, all the countries that provide better benefits, etc. You know, they're not going to go Poland, even though I don't know if they get in there. You know, they're not going to go anywhere where they're just going to be treated subpar. Oh, no, no, no. They want the freebies. Anyway. And of course, again, actually, that's another point I should probably make. But especially when you have politicians like Sturgeon and that dickhead from the Green, in fact, the whole of the Tin Pot Parliament, the Rainbow Unicorn Parliament, when you have politicians that are essentially laying out the red carpet for these people, you know, singing their praises, essentially screaming to the rooftops that they want them here, <laughs> you know? And there's a talk with UBI, there's a talk of allowing these people to work, they can already vote, stand in our elections, etc. You know? <laughs> it's essentially enticing these people. If they're deciding which country they're going to chance their arm at, mm, Scotland might be a bare shout when it's a humane immigration and asylum system in the S&P's control. You know? In a letter from August this year, seen by the BBC, Mears said it recognised that long stays in hotel accommodation were very difficult for our service users. However, Mears has now confirmed that it is using hotels in Aberdeen, Falkirk and Perth due to the rise in a number of people in the UK asylum system. This is a common with the approach across the UK where hotels are currently needed as a contingency. We have been working very closely and positively with local authorities and with other partners, including health and welfare teams and NGOs to provide support to other users. Blah, 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 blah. Um, is it this one here? I don't want this video getting too long. Asylum seekers being housed in unsuitable hotel accommodation in Falkirk. Oh, it's unsuitable. Yeah, well, as I said, it's fucking better. They've been out in the streets, or in the case of the Eritreans, the mud hut that they probably came from. Um, concerns have been raised after it was revealed around 50 asylum seekers are staying in a hotel in Falkirk. Free of fucking charge, of course, for them. You know? It's not like they're paid. It's not coming out of their pocket. But, um, you know... Let me see. The asylum seekers <laughs> understood to all be male, of course, and mainly from Eritrea. Um, they've been in Falkirk for around six weeks at the time of this article being published, you know. Should I point out, not that I really need to say that to the people listening to this, but, you know, the fact that it doesn't matter which country they come from, the vast majority of them are men, doesn't really scream out to me that wherever they're actually coming from, they're, they're, they're fleeing, you know, it's scary, it's terrors and ridiculous, persecution is rife, etc. Because you would probably see a hell of a lot more women than you actually do. The fact that it's just young men, vastly young men, in and of itself, screams out, chancer, chancers, to me, but no, it's fair and inhumane, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the move comes as the Home Office expands its use of hotel accommodation in Scotland with properties in Aberdeen and Perth, also ready to be used. Um, right, let me see. I'm sure it was this article. Falkirk Council leader said that the area had a proud tradition of accepting refugees. <laughs> but she was concerned about the lack of consultation by the Home Office. You know, it reminds me of is it this... Oh, please tell me I've got the right fucking tabs open. I'm so disorganised for these videos, man. You know, maybe I should uh, start writing scripts. <laughs> Is it this one? Oh, yeah, yeah. Scottish Refugee Council. Refugees have always been part of the UK. It's who we are. No, it's, it's who we are, apparently. You know, from what we're simultaneously told that our history is racist and our systems are all riddled with rife xenophobia and racism, etc. Systemic structural oppression. But apparently, it's in our DNA. It's who we are to be uh, hosts to refugees. Mm. Can't have it both ways. We have concerns about the suitability of accommodating asylum seekers in hotels, the site of the hotel chosen, and the lack of any meaningful consultation by the Home Office, with the Council, or any other public bodies impacted by the decision. However, we will work with the Home Office and the company managing the placements on their behalf to provide relevant support to the people placed in the hotel. We have supported the planned resettlement of refugees in Falkirk and continue to do so, with Falkirk having a proud tradition of accepting refugees and values the contribution that they have brought to the local area. 
oh yeah, I'm sure the Eritrean men will bring so much fucking contribution, but can we stop calling them refugees because they're asylum seekers, first and foremost, and uh, the likelihood is they're chance in their arm. You know, they're probably from Kenya or somewhere like that, you know. But, you know, they just told you that they're from Eritrea and you have to take it at face value, don't you? Because it's humane to do so. Anyway, like, the, really the point, I'm not going to bore everybody with articles such as this. The point was to just say that, uh, you know, complaints are rife that um, the hotels aren't up to standards. You know, the, the time that they have to wait, the fact that they're locked up in these rooms, etc. Uh, it's been compared to prison-like uh, conditions, etc. And it's just the stark contrast between that and the exchange that took place at the beginning of uh, the Rainbow Unicorn Question Time. You know, talking about homelessness. It's not an issue for these people, though, is it? No. <laughs> it's just fucking unreal that this is even a talking point. You know, get your fucking priorities in order. Quite frankly, I don't give a shit if a bunch of African men are complaining about their hotel. I don't give a shit if people in the Green Party and the S&P, etc. are very upset because these people don't have five-star accommodation. I couldn't give the slightest shit. Quite frankly, I don't even think these people should be here. Charity begins at home, does it not? <laughs> yeah. And then we've got shit like this. Home office is busting asylum seekers um, who cross the channel to Scotland. And then I love this. This is what I'm talking about. Look at this little fucking, the way it's worded here. Asylum seekers who have spent 10 hours or more crossing the channel in flimsy dinghies while terrified of drowning. Oh, fuck off. Are being bussed almost 500 miles to Scotland to be processed immediately after reaching UK shores, the Guardian has learned. Oh, no. I mean, you would think that would be a good thing from the Guardian's perspective. Not really from a Scottish perspective, as far as I'm concerned. However... The asylum seekers typically arrive in the beaches of the UK south coast, so shivering and traumatised. Oh yeah, traumatised, knowing damn well that they're going to be picked up by a coast guard. And lo and behold, the coast guard arrives on time. Until recently, they've been processed in home office short-term holding facilities and immigration detention centres an hour or two away from where they entered the UK. But in the last few weeks, dozens have been bundled onto buses and driven almost 500 miles. Oh, I'm sure the bus journey will warm them up after their harrowing experience floating across the channel. Oh, fuck me, man. <laughs> but in a lot... Oh, sorry. Kate Alexander, director of Scottish Detainee Visitor, said, When I visited Dungable on the 14th of October, I learned that around 50 people who had crossed the channel in small boats had been brought, brought there for processing. 50 people. Hmm, I wonder if that's the Eritrean men. So again, why the fuck are Eritrean men crossing the English Channel? <laughs> and then you've got to take into consideration as well, what about all the people that are here as refugees or whatever it may be who've come through the normal pro uh, channels you know they've not chanced their arm on boats knowing damn well that they'll be taken in it's not set in stone whether or not they'll have their claim except or not but there's people out there that go through the normal process the same way that there's a hell of a lot more that go through the legal process when it comes to migrating here but yeah it's an issue for a bunch of bay men who seem to have a be in their bonnet because their hotel isn't up to standards Ah, oh, fucking whoopie doo diddums. Anyway, I'll leave on that note. I guess the point of this video, whether or not it's really <laughs> worth uploading, I don't know. But it's just to really think about what the S&P mean. Is it, as I said, something that's just a case of grandstanding, bootlicking, political pandering, etc.? Or is there something more to it? When they always say that Currently, as things stand, the treatment of these people is inhumane and more needs to be done. We need a humane approach, a compassionate approach, etc., etc., etc. Is it the case that if they were to obtain the ability to control the system themselves, that there'd be a hell of a lot more people coming here? There'd be a lot quicker uh, processes when it comes to accepting their claims. There would probably be no rejections if it's all based on humane approaches, etc. I think, if I'm being honest, that when the time comes for them to have devolved immigration powers, and I do believe they'll get it eventually, and by extension the asylum system, etc., what will probably end up happening is a massive fucking influx of BAMES headed for Scotland, and each and every single one of them, irrespective of whether or not their claims are even remotely viable, 
will be accepted in full. Chancers galore. A bunch of Kenyan and Nigerian men will come over here and pretend that they're fleeing the, the perils of Sudan and the likes of Nicholas Sturgeon and that fat bastard Ian Blockford will be there quickly to remind you all that they're all desperate, traumatised and fleeing war and persecution etc etc even though they're fucking not. <laughs> anyway, I'll leave on that notes. Peace.